931 in New York and on Monday, Secretary of State John Kerry going to Cairo uh, to push for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. This is you look at the latest images out of Gaza. Meanwhile, prior to an interview on Fox News Sunday, uh, Secretary Kerry was on an open microphone, apparently mocking Israel's claims about the accuracy of its military operation. Later on the air, Mr. Kerry expressed U.S. support for Israel's right to defend himself. First, the moment it's with the open mic. It's a hell of a pinpoint operation. Right. It's escalating really, uh, significantly, and it just underscores the need for, for ceasefire. We've got to get over there. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Thank you, John. I think, John, we ought to go tonight. I think it's crazy to be sitting around. And apparently he followed through on that decision. He went to Cairo. KT McFarland, our Fox News national security analyst here in New York. And good morning, good morning. to you, KT. What did you make of that? What does it tell you? What it tells you is, is Secretary Kerry's mindset going into any kind of a ceasefire. He's already decided that Israel's wrong. Israel's in the wrong. Now, he says all the talking points, Israel has the right to exist, to defend itself. But the off-mic moment tells you a lot. It means that he's going into any kind of a ceasefire with the attitude that Israel's gone too far, that Israel has too many civilian casualties. And so you sort of know where his bias is walking in. And the reason this is important is because the fear has always been in the last several years in the Obama administration that they weren't as committed to Israel, that they weren't really sort of as previous American presidents and previous political leaders in the United States have been sort of, you know, deciding that Israel's got to have whatever it takes to, to survive and to exist in that region. So you worry that he walks into this negotiation already with a little prejudice uh, against uh, Israel. Let me stop you there because I was watching it. I, you know, I thought it was a very interesting moment. I don't think very often you find moments like that, especially on stories that are as significant as this. And, and he went on when Chris Wallace asked him to follow up and find out, you know, what, what, what his intention was there because I think Wallace called it a... Uh, to paraphrase him, an interesting diplomatic moment. Secretary Kerry said, listen, you should be able to defend yourself from rockets that come into your country. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to go after tunnels if they're sending terrorists into your territory. Right. Here's, Hamas knows it's not going to win this fight. I mean, it, it's a round of violence that Hamas always starts. They start, they, they have an incident, Israel responds, Hamas responds by lobbing rockets into Israel. Israel goes in and takes out the rockets. And then what does Hamas do in the interim period? Builds up more rockets to fight again. Hamas knows it doesn't win militarily. It hopes its only chance is to win diplomatically, politically. So that if there are casualties, mm -hmm. and they want Palestinian casualties, then they can go to the world and say, see, yeah. Israel's the aggressor. So what, what you're suggesting, Hamas would score a huge victory if it could divide Israel and, and the United States. That's the key. But do you see that happening under this administration? That's, that's the key and that's the worry. Israel knows that, say, for example, in Iran with nuclear weapons, that's an existential threat to Israel's existence. But suicide is Israel and the United States breaking because then Israel really is all alone in the world. Israel needs the American alliance. America should stand up for Israel. Hamas understands that. They understand if they can drive a wedge between the two, they win. Um, just not to get too particular on this, mm -hmm. but we're encouraging Hamas to take this ceasefire deal on behalf of Egypt. But Egypt has outlawed the Muslim Brotherhood, right. and Hamas supports the Muslim Brotherhood. So who brokers this? Well, that's the biggest question of all. In the past, Egypt has been able to broker. The United States has been able to broker. Um, Israel doesn't want the Muslim Brotherhood. They see it as a threat to their own existence. And so that's why Hamas is saying maybe we're going to have a different deal. Maybe. Cutter could broker this deal. Maybe Turkey could broker this deal. On the other hand, those are cutters who's supporting Hamas. You know, it's the Middle East, Bill. Nothing ever makes sense, and everything's always complicated. And, and, and it comes around over and over again, which comes back to your point that Hamas sees itself mm -hmm. in a normal state, you believe, as a group that's constantly at war with Israel. We understand in the West, we think peace is what's a normal state of events. Israel thinks the same way. War is something when peace breaks out, breaks down, and you got to fight. But then you fight, and it's done, and you, go to, you have peace again. Hamas, and in the Middle East, and the whole mindset of the whole jihadist mindset, terrorist mindset, war is constant. Peace is merely a pause while you regroup to fight again. And their goal of victory is that all Christians and Jews are dead, and Israel no longer exists as a Jewish state. I mean, they're, one of their leading clerics, who's got the most popular talk show host in the Middle East, he says, 
The reason we will ultimately win is young Muslim men love death more than young Jews and Christians love life. Well, the last incursion in Gaza lasted about 15 days. I think we're on day five now, so we'll see whether or not it continues. Katie, thank you. Katie thank McFarland you. in studio.